Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wired Unplugged, episode six, with me, Jake Kulkowski, Aaron Cooper, my valiant, stable, friendly co-host. Which that, stable it's, boy. it's sounding like oddly <laughs> specific, like a lie now. So, yeah. And our special guest this week, <coughs> Steve, ladies and gentlemen. So, oh, Steve. Steve. Thank you, thank you, thank um, you for that uh, illustrious introduction. Steve is just a one, one name. Guy, kind of guy, I just think. Steve. I'm like Madonna. That's that. Yeah, that is that is exactly. always, Pri- Prince always. Madonna. Same bra, Steve. Yeah. yeah. So we we're joined by you, Steve, because we wanted to talk about video game music. We wanted to talk about soundtracks, and we heard that you know a thing or two about them, vinyl, all this sort of stuff. Um, this is the right Steve, right? There's not a different Steve we should have invited on about. No, it. no, I, I, I'm pretty, well, I wouldn't say, I, I'm just a big fan of uh, music on vinyl and uh, particularly soundtracks, not just game soundtracks, film soundtracks, TV soundtracks. Um, just, just love them. Just love them. I think it's uh, nothing beats um, sort of that long form of music, 22 mm. minutes, get up, change it over. Perfect for me. Right. Well, I have to say as well. I, I I know I know we're starting this music talk early, and you know that will come later. But have have you have you seen the vinyls that have like the holographic effects? Like when they spin, they like project an image as they spin. There's yeah. a Star Wars one. Star Wars, which is a cr- oh, it's so good. Is it? it's so good. You put it. On, it's magic. It's like optical magic. It starts spinning. Then you see like the Death Star come out of the middle. So I good. think we're going too early on this. I think this is a long we are. play I, episode. It, it, and I it, think it that we're excited. This isn't a vine, is it? Okay. So yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Steve. Steve, you are integrated into the Ministry of Wired Propaganda, which is a segment we'll move on to very shortly. But for those that aren't aware of the magic of Steve, why don't you tell us directly? Uh tell us a little bit. Where did you come from, Steve? Who are you? What do you do? Where do I come from? Where do I go? Yeah, yeah. Got no Joe. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, well, I've uh, I worked the last nearly 20 years in games retail. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started making like just little videos and skits. And you say little, but they weren't little quite big. and, they weren't and quite big. Uh, yeah, dressing up in lycra, <laughs> um, on, on different social media platforms vine like you've just mentioned being one of them and then obviously twitter and all that um and it just come time to sort of like say okay let's go and actually work for a real games company and uh see if it works over there it seems to be going okay so far that is a really nice story to hear i like it um stories where it starts with somebody kind of making content messing about on the internet and then it becomes something a bit more viable i suppose because that's what loads of people I know who just do YouTube videos do. That's how I started, by the yeah. way. I used to make YouTube videos, and here I am. Um, so, okay, Steve. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And it's a good one because, you know, for those who are listening, um, maybe who are watching as well, you'll know that it's like we have a bit, it's a bit of a coin flip, really. We either have a, an interview segment, uh, or sometimes the guests are fully integrated. So you're here for the whole show, Steve, which means, unfortunately for you, maybe, it's not just music. You're going to have to talk to us about The Witcher. To talk to us about okay. lots of other information that I'm not going to spoil right Ooh. now. Um, the only thing that I'll mention before we get started is <clears throat> two things. One, if you've got a question for the show, you can email in. It's unplugged at Wired Productions. Or you can tweet us at Wired P for Productions. That's Wired P, P for Productions. You can tweet us, uh, you can at us, hashtag us, whatever. Uh, or you can just email us as well. Um, no snail mail, emails only. Uh, also, there's been some sort of like uh, incitement of um, uh, we, we've heard the voices from above have said, um, Jake, Aaron, you need to tell people more to subscribe. And they're trying to pit us against each other to see who can say subscribe more. But I feel like I'll win. So I've just I'm just going to say it now because I, I get to do all the beginning and end bits, don't I? Aaron? You so do just... have the most opportunity here. And I don't really subscribe to that. Oh. <sighs> all right. OK, that's thank you. All right. OK. All right. <laughs> I see. That's good. That's really good. That's... So yeah, and I just I'm just going to hit you with the most direct route possible. So mm-hmm. so with, with with whoever of us gets the most subscribe name messaging in this video, yeah, wins. Yeah, like first of all, okay. I don't know the terms and conditions apart from we can't just keep saying it. So I think there's like a limit, like it's like a seven minute cooldown, and I don't know what we win. So we'll take that up with our 
okay. you know, it appears later. But I just want to go down the most direct route uh, and the one full of the most context. It would be really beneficial for us if you subscribed to the Wired Productions Wired Unplugged segment uh, on your favorite um, podcast device. But if you're on YouTube, um, you can actually subscribe to Wired Live, which is like a whole plethora of like Wired content. So there's like some closer looks at some of the games behind the games, actually, um, where you can look at, well, we've had like some guests on from LKA. We've had discussions about Martha is Dead. And you can find out a lot more of information about that by just going on to the Wired channel on YouTube and subscribing. That's what I mean. I'm just, I'm Jay, just telling you. Like, it, that's, that's how you can do it. So, so, yeah, you can subscribe. And like I say, if you're listening on the podcast uh, platform, whatever, you can give us five stars or four, but five's better, to be honest. So, okay, um, that's it, really. Um, I'm going to just roll in with the Wired propaganda because there's actually some stuff to talk about on that side. So let me just run the jingle and we'll move on. Thank you very much. Wired propaganda. You know, there was a moment before uh, we started where I thought that I had uh, misplaced the jingles and I would have had to do them myself, as Aaron pointed out. And I'm glad I don't have to because I don't think I've got the pipes for that. That's a lot of exhaling, isn't it? Power. It's power. It is. Speaking of power, Wired Productions is a powerful video game developer and publisher. Uh, and therefore, like, you know, some companies invest in like crypto and NFTs. We've invested into the Ministry of Propaganda and our leader is Aaron Cooper. What have you brought to us this week? Well, you know, I, I had um, really fun co-writing this segment this week. You could say that I uh, was a subscriber of this. Um... <laughs> I don't know about that one, but okay, yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. It counts. It yeah, counts. yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so I think to kick off, this is going to be a weekly reminder until we get there. We are going to be at PAX. Mm. Now, we can't tell you what games that we're going to be showing at PAX because secrets, mm. secrets. However, what we can tell you is that we are going to be doing a panel at PAX. And when is that, Jake? It's uh, April the 27th. No, April the 22nd, which is a Friday. And it's in the spookily named Arachnid Theatre. At 4.30pm. At 4.30 um, Boston time. Boston and time, yes. Yeah, that's a Friday. That's like a good day to be on at PAX, actually, because it runs Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Um, the, the, the panel's going to be great. Ash Paulson, who was on a previous episode, yeah. is going to be there along with us, along with our fearless leader, Leo Zulo, mm -hmm. uh, and a few other special guests. Um, and without giving too much away, we're going to be talking about the, the 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 family of Wired and how that permeates everything that we do as a company, from the employees through to the development partners who do become family, and why that makes for a better conducive work experience relationship. Wise, we get to have arguments with each other without you know being becoming really upset, and we get passionate. Um, but you have all of that to look forward to at PAX. So that's less than a month away. So that that's that's that's, that's our first that's that's the first point on the agenda here. Um, we we also have more convention news coming up. We do. We are going to be at WASD or <laughs> as it's that's what I call it WASD. Everyone, everyone yeah. calls it WASD. You yeah. call it WASD. W A S D. That means something completely different where I'm from. Yeah, yeah just, well, just I know it the same way that Steve does. <laughs> oh, I went out last night. I got completely wazzed. That, so that's wazzed. what I thought it meant because, but but then I I assume it's wazzed because it's like like a phoenix from the ashes. It's it's risen from rezzed, e g x rezzed. So I thought that it was supposed to be a bit of a play on that. Although yeah. I think for legal reasons they can't say that because of different companies. But I think I think that that was the intention. But WASD, and because uh, of the because it's PC focused, because right? it's the the PC gamer sort of yeah, the one isn't it? It's, it's how you the WASD claw, the WASD claw, yeah, exactly. So that's so <laughs> so if anyone who doesn't know, WASD is a brand new games convention. Um, that's yeah, br bravely going into it by by like, coming out in the, in early 2022, just off the back yeah. of a pandemic, and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's the Maiden Voyage. It's the first ever WASD. And yeah, it's really interesting and really keep exciting to, to see keep it. Keep saying WASD. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep saying WASD. Yeah. yeah you, we should be keep saying subscribe, but WASD is so much better now. This is the new game. Yeah. It was. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting. It, it, it's, it's exciting. Um, for me, personally, I haven't really seen a new games convention on a, like a scale like this appear. And so 
to have an opportunity to partake and to see you guys there is excellent. And uh, what you bringing? What you, you coming in more pandas? Yeah. yeah, Steve. Steve, are you, are you wasting? I'm not wasting. You're not wasting. I'm all, I'm all wasd out. You wasd out. Be, I will be paxing though. You yeah. you will be paxing. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. Bob paxing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's that's good. That. He's going as well. Bob, 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 Bob will yeah. be Can there. Can we just provide the context of Bob for those who are unaware, please? Does Bob, does Bob have a separate plane seat? He will, yeah. Of course he yeah. does. Well, he's not yeah. going to sit on my lap. Yeah. yeah. Is it you? You got a twin room? Is it you yeah. and Bob? Just me and Bob. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that is the so, best thing you could have done. <laughs> so Bob is a relative of mine, and basically he's head of uh, packing, technical innovations, and all things wired shop. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. And we have quite a fam- strong family resemblance. I heard speaking I... speaking of packing though, regarding West, we are actually taking quite a lot of games. Some of these will be coming to packs. That's good. But the list, let's let, let's list them off. We've got Lumote, the Massimo Chronicles, uh-huh. Tin Hearts, which is um by Rogue Sun, which are former Lionhead devs. We oh, spoke yeah. about them last week as well, They're and they will yeah. be on in the future, which is exciting. Uh, Tiny Troopers Global Ops, that's going to be there. Arcade Paradise, yeah. which you know we're going to talk about music. Yeah, that has some really good music. Yeah. And Martha will be resurrected and coming along with us as well. Uh, oh, Martha survived. resurrected is not the sequel. <laughs> we will be taking Martha is dead. So um, yeah, that will be there as well. But also members of the Y team are going to be there, but not Steve, not Bob. Um, but you will likely meet Tegan, Gary. Yeah. Uh, good old Gary yeah. um, and other members of the team as well. And some of the devs are going to be along as well. So if you want to come and have a proper chat, learn how games are made, have a chat about video game music, about the past, about arcades, about paradises. And and support some companies first first go round. Like I was yeah. I, re- I remember I was actually uh, I was actually at the first whilst actually. <laughs> this is the first yeah, That yeah. could be you. That could be you in a couple of years' time. I, I was a vintage wazzer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, vintage was okay. Cool. So that's that's good. But there's more. There's more propaganda this week. There is more. There is more. And Steve, I'm going to bring you in on this one. So the Falconeer vinyl is en route, and you've also pulled together some of the most fascinating hypnotic video content that I've seen for this announcement because I have never seen vinyl be pressed before, and I am impressed. That's good yep. as well. You're yep. on fire today. You are. It's it's oh. it's something special. It's something really special. Um, it's got that sort of feeling of um, those documentaries you used to watch on how a chocolate bar is made and yeah. things like this. And and literally, it is a lump of vinyl that is pressed. It's analog. It's then cut off and do it, and a label is sucked. And it's it's just a thing of beauty. And it just sort of drags you back to vinyl is analog. You know, it's not digital. It's not coming down the wires. It is something. It is a needle that scratches vinyl and vibrates at a certain tempo that creates that sound, and uh, it's it's just beautiful. A um, bit more news on it. It's we've now got the sleeves. I, I could show them you, but I'd have to kill you. Um, we've got the sleeves. They're being they're literally being shrink wrapped today, so they should be out in the next couple of weeks, and it is gorgeous. That's exciting. Where, where can yeah. people view this uh, content uh, of vinyl pressing? Uh, it's, 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 this this is uh, particularly for Jake right now. If you like, subscribe, I want to see this. If you subscribe <laughs> oh, to at Wired P as as long as subscribing to this, then you'd be able to see it on Twitter. So very good and very good. This I, is this one. This I, is going very smoothly. This is the subscribe. I, I also think yeah. I, I do. I do also think though we have got to give a big shout out to um, so Thomas Thomas Seller. He made the yeah. game. Absolutely amazing guy. Um, technical genius, love the man. Um, but he t- he he made the decision to bring on uh, Benedict to work on the uh, on the music for the game. Thomas had a very very particular idea in his head that Benedict's managed to pull out in some way, which is like frontal tribal warbling. It's it's not yeah. something you would associate with air combat and battle, but when you smash it all together, it just works. And the soundtrack itself is absolutely beautiful. And I think to hear that come through. The, on, on vinyl as well, as, as Steve mentioned, analog, pure analog. Well, well, having listened to the test pressings, got an early test pressing, listened to it. Lucky the closest I can describe it to is um, if you've ever listened to War of the Worlds on vinyl. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. which is an absolute classic, but it has got some spoken word bits and the music. Uh, it's, it's just, it, it's, it's just brilliant. It's absolutely yeah. brilliant. And it, it's that it being on vinyl, it grabs your attention. You're not going to be doing anything else when you do this. You're not going to be just having a bit of music on in the background while you cook your tea or whatever. You're going to sit down and you're going to put the vinyl on and you're going to sit there and you're going to experience it. And it's, mm. it's, it's, I hate to say it's probably better than playing it in the game just to listen to it. It's amazing. Don't I, tell Thomas. No, I I also think though, what good news, what good mood music if you're doing like a a gaming day or something like D and D, have it on in the background. Like yeah. it's just got that vibe that and tone. Be, yeah. And you mentioned the the spoken word as well. That is our that is also our good friend Mikey Goodman, mm-hmm. who does our yeah. jingles. Yeah. Um, he knows how to say a word or two, man. Yeah, and friend of the show. Speaking of jingles. Thank you very much for the wire propaganda segment. We're going to whip out uh, a mainstay, but one that's been a bit, you know, the wheels haven't turned on this one very much, but the wheels are back in motion and they're full of deals, right? This is this is the one. We got we got some news on this. I think it's been a good two-week drought on the deals for meals. So let, let's have a go. I'm excited. Deals for meals. Deals for meals. Deals for meals. Deals for meals. This is it. Deals for Meals is the segment where, I was going to say every week, but it's just when someone buys someone, really. We <laughs> we have a little... We covered look. Wordle, everyone. We covered Wordle. We analysed. Like, we did a, cover Wordle. Week. That's what I was, we tried, <laughs> didn't we? So, like, yeah, we'll have a look. We'll figure it out. And we'll figure out how many chicken mayos you can buy. Other fast food restaurants are available. But that seems to have been the measurement stick wasn't it i think because it's around 99p isn't it a chicken meal or something like that yeah so, um and this isn't a sponsor segment for mcdonald's but uh, if you do want to get in touch with mcdonald's it's unplugged at wired productions <laughs> or you can tweet us at wired p p for productions or you can subscribe so what's what's the acquisition we've got uh this week so, so usually we can measure this in uh chicken sandwich meals um however there hasn't been a price or a cost put on this uh, but I can assume it's quite hefty. So assume that stacks and stack of chicken sandwiches going into your face. Um, maybe the double Big Mac, the chicken ones. I think yeah, they're back. You could get uh, them. But there's a shortage. Um, <laughs> it, 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 essentially, the big news <laughs> is that PlayStation have um, acquired a new studio. And it's, uh, yeah. it's Haven Studios, which is headed up by Jade Raymond. Uh, we all know Jade Raymond, not personally, yeah. but we're all familiar with Jade Raymond and the work that she has done in the past. Um ex uh ea motive used to work on the uh as producer on the assassin's creed franchise back in the day um, yeah. and then she moved over to google where she was given the role to head up their game development uh teams to help get that away um after leaving uh the stadia team jada set up haven studios um and they have been acquired um by um by playstation which is which is great news and really mm-hmm. good win for them um, the interesting thing is that the game that they're reportedly first working on is uh, a live service game, uh, and the whole ambition is to build a world that can be handed over to the players for them to uh, evolve and grow alongside and to have them own. What the hell does that mean? It sounds like <laughs> open the floor. <laughs> okay, it sounds like um, Mark Zuckerberg describing the metaverse. Ah, yeah, it, it, <laughs> to be completely it, it, honest. That's it's, the sort of spiel he gave, wasn't it? Do whatever you want. It's so interesting because in brackets on my side of this, because we, we write it all out and we see what we're going to say. In brackets on my side of the script, I just said, is 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 this a, another way of saying metaverse without saying metaverse? Um, <laughs> but so so you you, uh, you either yeah, it's are like... on the same wave wavelength or you've hacked my PC and my screen right yeah I, it's yeah yeah one of them's got a lot, lot worse connotations to be honest so let's <laughs> let's just assume we're on the same wave but, um yeah. so yeah I don't know it's 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 a bit uh yeah that it, it's saying a lot and it's also saying nothing to be honest like uh I don't know a lot of worlds these days you can hand over but handing over to the players yeah sounds like it's something where players will be able to interact with I don't know the environment permanently, stuff like that. Maybe own little play, but again, it just sounds like the metaverse at this point. Uh, Steve, do you have any theories well, about this? Can mean, what if it's a revamp of uh, PlayStation Home? Oh wow, that would be something, wouldn't it? That would be something that use, special. Did the PlayStation Home use a, a subscriber model? 
Uh, it didn't use a subscriber model, but didn't it? You could buy items in it. You could buy yeah. DLC. You could buy outfits and and all sorts. I knew the answer uh, to that. I just I just want to use subscribe. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, yeah, very. Well. That's uh, very but no, good. but no. Do you know what? That would be very interesting, though, wouldn't it? Um, especially if you look at, um, let's say, what is going on within the metaverse on on the meta side. Um, and the fact that PlayStation already did have this space previously, and we're in a way ahead of the game in terms of what's coming yeah. now. Um, but then you factor in the fact that they have PSVR 2 <laughs> on the horizon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and the dog has strong opinions about that, apparently. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um, but no, they have PSVR 2 on the horizon as well, and to be able to experience a space like that uh, with a new VR technology as well could be interesting. Yeah, okay, very, very interesting. So we don't know much, but it's certainly something. Haven Studios, Jade Redmond, PlayStation. Thank you very much, Aaron. Now let's cast a wider net, okay? A net on a stick, like what like cartoon thieves have, because this is um, the section of the show where you bring your stolen goods from the internet. <laughs> Actually, sounds a lot worse than it is. And you explain what you've brought in. So <laughs> without further ado, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> from Google and Twitter and Bing and anywhere else. Um, this is the segment of the show where Aaron scours the internet for stories worth talking about and presents them to me like I'm some sort of barbarian warlord and you have thrown some furs down in front of me. What's on? Master. Uh, no, um, <laughs> so we, we, there's no way we could have this segment and not talk about this. Um, yeah. A brand new Witcher game has been announced. Um, no release date, no time frame, but we are safe in the knowledge that work has begun on the next in the Witcher line. However, some interesting nuggets have come out of this. So one is that it's a brand new saga. So, uh, and with that information alone, as well as the different medallion on the uh, logo, might be quite telling it itself. So are we returning to Geralt? Are we going with someone else? We need to get Doug Cockle back on just to yeah. see what's going on there, to be honest. Um, That's, that but, episode's going to age well, actually. You can check yeah. that out. Not subscribe, but you can check Fly it back. out. Like, it's the first episode we did, um, if you need to check that out, with Geralt himself, the real Geralt, Doug Cockle. Yeah. So, yeah. Recorded on the... Uh, Day of the launch of the series two of The Witcher, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Henry Cavill doesn't make an appearance or like send a, send him like a big gift basket or anything, but like you know, he celebrated with me, so it was okay. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, I, get, mean, I this think is... he did get COVID as well on that day, so well, maybe oh, not no. a good day. But that that was that was around the time you you were you you were COVID. I as have, well. yeah yeah exactly that yeah episode one me and Doug Cockle have COVID. Yeah. But anyway anyway we In the next episode the you get wazzed. It's gonna be great. Yeah exactly. Um, it's, oh, but. But new saga, new beginnings, uh, very interesting. Um, but speaking of other new things uh, regarding The Witcher as well, is that they are, they're not forsaking it, but they are letting go of the um, the, the red engine that CD Projekt use internally for Cyberpunk, for The Witcher and so on, which is their internal proprietary technology, um, instead and in favor of using Unreal Engine 5. Um, and as part of that, uh, they've entered into a deal with Epic where they're going to be a part of assisting with building the tech behind that as well and continue developing alongside them. So it's a very interesting news story that I think we should discuss. Are we excited for a brand new Witcher? Are we over the cyberpunk fiasco? Where are we sitting? How are we feeling? Um, Steve, would you would you like to share your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I love the Witcher. But when the last one came out, it wasn't the most hyped game at the time. Mm. It really did grow over, you know, over a year almost. Yeah. I mean, it was big, but it was nowhere near the size of something like Cyberpunk was when it launched. And I think that added pressure. The more, the more, the earlier you say something, the more pressure you're going to put on it. If this game's not ready and absolutely spot on at launch, people are going to crucify it. They did, you know, with mm-hmm. Cyberpunk, they did. Uh, but that's now a great game, but it's been a year. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they've been announcing updates for that slowly and, you know, apologetically. I, 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 I personally think it might have been a bit of a misstep for them to announce this this early. Like you're saying, Steve, because it gives people time. It gives, it gives 
hype time to to cultivate and 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 it didn't go well for them last time. You, you're dead right. I I actually played The Witcher Three on launch. I was move. I think I said this last. It was either last week or the week before. But I was moving home, and uh, I'd broken my mobile phone, and it was coming to the end of its contract. So I just thought, well, rather than pay like the insurance of like a hundred quid, I just go without a phone for a month. So I moved home, and I had no internet. I had no phone. I had no message to the outside world. Right. I'd moved to a new town for the first time, <laughs> and I had two weeks off work to move house. I didn't really. It was my first time moving out of my parents as well. Right. So I didn't really know how long any of this took. In about three days, I'd smashed all the boxes, and I had a good week and a half of isolation and of Witcher 3. And I don't trust myself that much. I was play, you know, normally I like to go on, check the reviews, but I'm playing this and I'm thinking, this can't be right, man. Is it just because I'm by myself? I, but something about this feels like it might be one of the best games ever made. So then to just go on the internet and it was like, oh yeah, actually. Because I, I played them um, just a few months before I played Bloodborne. And yeah, I had exactly the same thing where I was like, am I wrong? Or is this like one of the best games ever? And then I had it as a witcher and I was like, I must be getting old, like soft in me old age or something. Because <laughs> for some reason, like, I'm, but, but now they've both done well over time. And, and the thing about the witcher is I think it's one of them where cyberpunk could have just remained like, you know, a, a game that couldn't even be sold on the PlayStation store because it was so broken. And as long as they come correct with the witcher, people will be there for it. Like, um, yeah. I don't know how many more new fans it would have gathered like from the show. I watched the show and I didn't really think there was that much in it for people who aren't aware of the series already. I, I think a lot of the lore and the really interesting things are kind of not really delved into too much. I, I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. But but I, I love the idea of a new Witcher game. And if they get it right, they can win back so much of the good grace that I think they actually have lost. Yeah. But oh, I, unless it's I, like next year, I, why say anything? <laughs> I do well. I, I I have some theories, and I think you have to take the step back from the player perspective, like in sure. terms of hiring and recruiting uh, for jobs, yeah. um, and then also to announce the that they're going to, the big piece of news as well um, to say, hey, we're working hand in hand with Epic on their tools to make it as good as possible. But it feeds back to what you just said as well, is from a shareholder perspective to say, hey, we are working on one of the greatest, we're working on a sequel to uh, one of the greatest games that has launched in video game history. Um, and we have this big, massive partnership. Um, I think that probably does a lot of favors from a financial point of view, from the shareholder point of view and so on. Um, that would be That would be my reasoning for why they've done it but you know there are a lot of games and we spoke about this before as well there are games where they are obviously released uh announced too um too far in advance i mean look at starfield that <laughs> that has been on the radar for a long time yeah. and people were excited about it before we even had you know its official reveal um and people are still excited about it now even though they know next to nothing about it well actually at the same time they announced starfield didn't they also announce the next elder scrolls game which we yes know is coming yes. out after starfield yeah that to me is like they, yeah. they, they they just put together that cgi trailer on the way to e3 yeah. here's like, a mountain oh great yeah <laughs> yes yeah like, but, 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 like, feed me we, seymour yeah we, we, we've had an internal discussion and we think we're gonna do another one that's what that yeah. might as well have been but but yeah, yeah like yeah. i think i think that's coming up to six years now and it'll be at least another four years away so you so you're dead right but but you know like i i don't want to call it a victim but let's call it a victim i think cyberpunk was a victim of its own hype in a way and yeah. and i think that we'll see a lot more of them now that we're getting these really high profile like like the next elder scrolls game if it's anything less than like a nine out of ten the internet will be ablaze because of the amount of um hype. Mm, i think actually cyberpunk is a casualty of the business side of games getting too involved. Um, you know, they had pre-agreed contracts with their local governments who were part of funding the game as well, that they had to meet a, a very specific date to get it out before. And, you know, they delayed it really up until the last thing. So because of that agreement, the game had to launch by hook or by crook as it was. And that is a shame for the creative people behind it, because when you know in your heart, this isn't ready yet, but you have this financial contractual agreement yeah. um it 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 is it's it's a shame um <clears throat> it's a shame and you know as, as steve said as well the game right now 
now that it's had its updates and so on and is next gen ready it's it's singing and it's great and this is this is the actually uh the point once i'm done with um what i'm playing elden ring yeah uh, whenever that I've may be that. Yeah. um that's that's the next game i'm gonna jump into i have my copy sealed that i've been waiting for the next gen version to be ready so i'm, I'm ready to give it a go um that yeah that's it's the same for me. I've, I've been waiting for an opportunity to jump back in. I want to give it an opportunity again to impress me. And there's a lot of the good ingredients there. So, yeah, interesting. And I hope that <clears throat> they get some, you know, something out of this. And hopefully it's the drive to make a really, really good game again and get it right. So. I, do, I, I don't want to leave with this point because I know we've got more to talk about. But I, I do like the idea of it having a new protagonist um, and, you know, being set from a different perspective, but then so, have... Geralt be involved somewhere in the world, like this unreal entity that you've already built him up to be across three games. This like a massive elusive more. presence, yeah. and it's like you experience it from a different angle, and you get to witness the the, the myth and the legend side um, of of the capabilities. Uh, of Geralt. I couldn't agree more. I think that's the best thing they could do with it, to be honest. He'll have to be mentioned. It's like if you're doing it, it's like Better Call Saul has to have Walter White yeah. in it at some point. Yeah, but you know. Uh, uh- yeah, I, I want to play as uh, Dandelion, the poet. Yeah, just the entire game. That's how I want to be, Dandelion. Yeah. Mul- just, Mul- just see all these battles. Stand there and just yeah. knock a tune out. That'll get, do. Get a notepad out. Yeah, brave, exactly. brave yeah. Sir Robin. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, very good. That, that that that's a very 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 big story from this week. What else have we got? <clears throat> there is another game that has just been released. Ghost something. I forgot the name Ghost of the game. Wire, Ghost Wire Tokyo. Ghost Wire, by... Ghost Wire Tokyo, that's the one. Um, right, yeah. so basically this, this game, uh, it was announced uh, at E3 during a really cool uh, press conference and the most wonderful person stepped out onto stage. It was this really cool Japanese creative designer, Ikumi Nakamura, right? Mm-hmm. And she did all these cool poses. If you listen to this, I'm doing poses on the video version. Uh, so don't watch that. Um, but she became very quickly, the world fell in love with her, like the absolute spirit that she was exuding about this game that she was working on was incredible, quickly became a love of the world. And I just want to um, quickly say so much so that the other person on stage with her was the guy who invented and directed the first Resident Evil game, Shinji, Shinji Mikami. Mikami. Yeah. And no one even remembers that. Yeah. They just remember this infectious energy, don't they? So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. If you've out upstaged him, it's like going on stage of Hideo Kojima, and then they're like, oh, it was Jake and this other guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, yeah you're, you're dead right. They made I, a huge impression on the world. The internet fell in love immediately. I'm, I'm going to just throw back to a story here. I once had breakfast alongside Shinji Mikami. Alongside? <laughs> yeah. Not with. Well, no, I was, I was, I was, it was it parallel. Was, it was the first e3 i ever went to and we were staying in the same hotel apparently and i went down for breakfast quite tired sat there eating breakfast slowly getting ready for the day of madness ahead and then i looked to my left and it's just it's shinji mikami not only that it's yoshinori Yano as well from street fighter and i'm just like oh my god i turned to someone who didn't really know games and said it's shinji mikami and they're like oh right who <laughs> Uh, so much so that I, I did I did stop him on his way out for breakfast and say, Shinji, Shinji, can I have a photo? And it was great. And I had a photo. Uh, the photo was blurry. So anyway, I don't Power guess. in one photo. That's what it is. So I- Ikumi Nakamura, absolute yeah. wonderful person, announced that game. And then three months <laughs> later, she departed okay. the studio, um, which which is... Which is sad, but it's it's come out that um, you know it wasn't a good place for her for her health uh, mentally and physically, um, so she decided to part ways with with the project. Um, and even though that she was um, she held a very senior role on the project, um, she didn't really get good presence. It turns out in the in the credits of the game, and she's down there in the in the special thanks section. Um, which, which is a shame. And, you know, I'm, I'm comparing this against Steve, uh, who at the launch of Martha is Dead was in the Martha is Dead credits twice, back to yeah. back. Yeah. That is <laughs> and really... Bob. Wow. Isn't Bob Packer in the credits as well? As well, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> three me, times. My Steve. relative, and I'm in there as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think I'm a lot of man. Yeah. There's a lot of well, man going uh, around. Uh, Nothing I, wrong with that. 
I, I think we should just put her in the credits of all of our onward games. <laughs> yes. Put, yeah. 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 Kumi thanks. Nakamura. Didn't yeah. do anything, but we love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a shame. That's, <clears throat> and it's not, not the first time I've heard this. I actually, I, I, I can't say too much, but I do know somebody who was a very, very prominent figure in a AAA video game. Like, you know, directing it as creatively as they possibly could. Yeah. And they bowed out of the project after three years of service and ended up in the special thanks section after a lot. And, and that's just, some, that's just something I know and I don't know anything. <clears throat> so like, yeah, it, it's a shame. It, and uh, it is, it is a shame. It is a shame. However, when it comes to credits for me, the people I take most notice of are in the special thanks. Cause I'm like, I wonder what they did. I wonder what the story is there. Did they just have a lunch and was like, oh, I've got this idea. I'm going to add it in. Or, you know, what yeah. did they do? It's like they're the spies of the game. Do you know what I mean? It's like this, the mysterious the shadow entities. council. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. The shadow council is like, what did they do to get to get in that special thanks? Yeah. And I, I enjoy the special thanks section a lot more. That's personally. yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, like what like yeah, what what made Although that, I'm sure I'm sure if you are a creative so director, offensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let's get yeah. that right. Okay, so yeah, interesting. Um bring me your final piece of news before we speak to Steve about all things vinyl. Music. Okay, so um at GDC, um Ubisoft have announced their uh cloud based technology called Scalar. So what this is, is a, it's a cloud piece of tech. It's not an engine. It's a piece of tech uh, that can be used standalone or it can be bolted onto another engine. Um, it can be updated in real time. So as people are playing, it can be updated whilst people are in game. You know, there are no, you know, here, take this 12 gigabytes, uh, 12 gigabyte, yeah, 12 gig update download file. Yeah. None of that. It can just be updated on the fly. Uh, which is which is great, which means that real um, timed events can happen on the fly as you're playing through the world. Things can things can happen that weren't there before or not coded into the game, um, and they think that this can help them build more uh, immersive games for the players, but also allow them to make even bigger games. Not that Ubisoft need to touch <laughs> on making games any bigger. I think yeah, they've please, cracked that yeah. down. Yeah. Very um, now. I'm interested to hear what you all think about this, um, but I have a theory. I have a little theory that we have already seen this in action several years ago from Ubisoft. If you remember, um, they had at their E3 conference, um, I forgot his name, but he came on stage and then he announced Beyond Good and Evil 2. Mm -hmm. And then they showed off this tech demo, um, which really wasn't you know, showcasing uh, the game in action, to be honest, you could tell it's quite clearly uh, a tech demo uh, where they had m giant, massive, incredible entities coming into this planet sized thing and things just kept moving out in scale and scale and all these things just happening that shouldn't be possible uh, in a standard engine. And I think that this is either being built from that or it was something that they have salvaged from the Beyond Good and Evil 2 project to. Uh, build into their to their repertoire of technology. That is my theory on this. I think we've already seen it in action at E3 2018. 17. 17. Yeah. I do watch that video though, because it is ridiculously impressive. It's 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 incredible. Yeah, did you catch that, Steve? The um the Beyond Good and Evil 2 reveal from many, many moons ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean <sighs> I just I just want it. I just want the game because I was a huge fan of the first one. Yeah. Same. Just loved it. It's been um yeah, it's been um uh, a big part in the sort of, you know, more serious allegations against Ubisoft and I think actually it was Michael Ansel who uh, uh he, uh, he Michel Ansel. The, that's it, yeah. He yeah. he departed the project didn't he, a couple of years ago. And as yeah, far as true. I know, it's officially Although I'm sure that it's not officials and they won't admit it in development hell. So it, yeah. it's, but, but yeah, I, the beautiful thing I suppose about AAA development is that you, you, you know, you, you pool all this time and energy into a re, into, into one resource, one, one project like that. And then that can be repurposed. I mean, Ubisoft are really good at doing that, but uh, you know what I mean? Like in, in terms of like, uh, you know, new technology pieces, this would have been the perfect sandbox for them to try it. So yeah, we might well have seen it before. And, and I like the idea of that. I like the idea of killing off um big updates and big patches and things like that uh i live out in the sticks and the internet is atrocious here and it actually um 
yeah, will like ruin my day if I'm like want to get onto. I was wanting to play Returnal the other day, and there was a patch mm. that was like four gig, which is like fifty minutes for me. <laughs> Believe it or not. Oh mate, wow! <laughs> Are you in the batteries? I'm gonna tell you. I, uh, you know, I really am, and, and the internet <laughs> is really slow. Uh, I went to download uh, It Takes Two the other day to play with my yeah. friend. It took four hours, and it's like thirty gig. So to me, like a, a world where that exists is is uh, you know a, a happy world. Until the, I get the the mega fiber broadband or whatever. The 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 question I do want to answer, aside from your internet words, Jake, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is do you want even bigger game worlds? Um, no, not at all, really. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. i um, well, I don't. I, Done. I, I played, Moving on. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been playing these Dark Souls games for years, and they've made yeah. big Dark Souls now, so I'm done. Like I've got yeah. Elden Ring now, and and I'm alright. I actually, I actually don't really rate these hugely open world games. Like I, I really don't. And I think it's dead easy when you've got a world that vast to see behind the curtain. You can see the seams. You can see the repeat. You can see the cut and paste a bit more. You can see all, all of the mechanics. Mm. And you know, unless you're doing a Breath of the Wild or now an Elden Ring, which I think yep. would be the bar for some time to come. To be honest, it's very, very difficult to mask that. Like, like, but but when a game's good and there's loads of it. Couldn't be happier. I, I I love the fact that Elden Ring has got such a bountiful world. The Witcher Three, another one. Couldn't get enough of it. But for the most part, I'd rather like a God of War type experience. Just get through it and stuff like that. I, I think it. I think I, with something like this, it's all about how you traverse the world. Hmm. You you know. I mean, Far Cry, the last Far Cry, Far Cry Six. I think Six it was. It was yeah. yeah, I loved it. I loved it, but that's because I loved flying the helicopters in it. Yeah. And it was just great to just fly the helicopters and blow stuff up all the way. And so that was great, but that was a massive game. That was huge. And it, it had the usual things that you have in a Ubisoft game. It's like, it's a little bit empty. There's not a lot to do. It's, yeah. it's this, but I loved the game because I just loved the way that you sort of got around the map. Yeah, you and do. I loved the, even when you, um, you could jump to another location, all of a sudden you had a wing suit suit on and that's how you landed. It was brilliant. It was brilliant for that. So, yeah, uh, you know, I, I think it's all well and good as having bigger worlds. We just need more stuff in them. Yeah, it, exa it's exactly. The content and and the way you discover the content, right? Because there are a lot of open world games that are massive where it just right. absolutely throws up icons on the screen. Yeah. And you don't feel like you discover it. It's like, I'm just going to set a waypoint and go there. But as Jake mentioned, like with Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring, there is a quality to the craftsmanship of the world that encourages your eye. And same with The Witcher as well. I know the guy who made all the points of interest in The Witcher, and he, he spent a long time explaining to me about, you know, how, how to catch someone's eye and, you know, to get them to consider to revisit somewhere at a later time and things like that. And there's so much craftsmanship put into that, that, you know, I don't think it's a case of just expanding the size. I would much rather have a smaller pool that is deeper than a wide pool that is shallow. Yeah, ex exactly. And I think you're dead right about that. Like, get people's eyes on the game, not the menus around it. Like, I saw, you know, Ghost of Tsushima, they, they were putting effort into that. Like, the wind blows in the way you're supposed to. Smoke on the horizon. Smoke, and, and, and yeah. you've got all these different colours and th things like that. But they were really clever with that, because they managed to make the whole game playable in black and white. And, and so, like... Yeah. They use a lot of vibrant colors, but then made that so that was completely optional. Kurosawa but, mode. Kurosawa that's mode. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, that was interesting. I like I like these little tricks. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's really something. So thank you very much for the the news. I mean, we were a bit top heavy with The Witcher, weren't we? But uh, you we mean how, how good luck to anyone competing with that? Um, we don't have a jingle for this next bit, but it's time, um, the viewer or listener, probably listener, to be honest, to talk music. Steve, you've sat very, very patiently um, for a long time to talk about music. And you kind of gave us a little bit of an insight to your well of knowledge there with vinyl talking. You know, there was... I'm a very big fan of music, um, so it excites me when I hear somebody who's clearly also excited. And you were using lots of words there, which are telltale signs including analog, which nobody really says anymore unless they really care. So let, let you, uh, I, I don't actually think I've had this conversation with you before, Steve, so I'd love to know, um, in your own words, really, why you care about vinyl 
in 2022? Because it's not a stupid question anymore, is it? People, uh, people would have thought that 10 years ago, but they're not anymore, are they? And Steve, I don't, I, I, I don't want to interject, even though I am interjecting, but, and people won't see this. This segment on the, on the sheet, at least, is called War of the Worlds. Good. There you it, go. Perfectly. And, and then Aaron's explained that joke for me here because vinyls were around, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I did write that. He's written that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. But no, I thought it was self expansion And weirdly, Steve didn't know that and mentioned War of the Worlds earlier. Isn't that strange? So, yeah, Brilliant. Steve, vinyl. It's, it's, it was a thing, then it wasn't a thing. Now it's a thing. What's vinyl? Well, uh, well, I'll tell you now, for some of us, it's always been a thing. It's never yeah. gone away. Um, I feel sorry for a lot of those people that were around that had big collections and uh, got rid of them, car booted them, charity shopped them, um, because, you know, they're all buying. I, I know so many people that are just buying the same records they had when they were a kid, um, right. you know, building up that collection again. Uh, what is it for me, though? I, I, I just think there's something about putting music at the at the center of the experience. And I think the entire um, holding a large sleeve, reading the notes, taking mm. it out, giving the, giving the record a wipe down. The and ritual. Playing, oh, yeah, the ritual. The, there's something very and, – and, and when you put time into something like that, you are putting music at the center of the experience and you are listening to it track for track for track for track, how it, how it should be. I think we – you know, we, we – we're too easily swung by, oh, play it, shuffle play. Shuffle play on your iPod. Everyone uses shuffle play, but it just means that music becomes something in the background. But I think when you sit down with a with a record and you put it on a good record player and you put it on, that is the only thing you do. You don't do anything. It is just at the heart of your listening experience. Yeah. Okay. That, that's a really interesting take on it because, yeah, Music, you know, um, television is like the, the heart of most homes, right? Which mm -hmm. is one way. It's yeah. just a media consumption device, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah. people who are listening to this who, you know, live in a, an apartment or a bedroom or whatever, they'll, they'll use their computer, not a TV and stuff like that. But if you're serious about music, why would you not have a vinyl player as the thing that you sit around, like the fireplace, and you put music on and you focus on it? You know, concerts give you that experience. You know, you've got a bit of visual aid there. But all they're doing is making that. So I really like that idea, and and I've never really heard it put like that. So I like that a lot. And and Aaron, just before we really crack into this, I just wanted to hear what your opinion is on on vinyl. Do you first of all do you own a vinyl player? And this is a completely separate question, as I've learned very recently. Do you own a vinyl collection? Because you don't actually need one to have the other these days, apparently. No, it's true. Um, I I I, I have both. Um, I have the vinyl player. And I have now amassed a nice cupboard full of vinyl. And it, it goes down to... Um, the, I, I love the ritual of it all that Steve explained. Like, yeah. there's nothing better than having uh, a lazy weekend morning with a nice freshly brewed coffee and just putting something on, going through the jacket and reading the lyrics and looking at the, uh, you know photos or the art that's included as well it's it's wonderful it's so relaxing um and what i found actually is that with my vinyl collection i have i have music on vinyl that i normally wouldn't listen to otherwise i feel like there are specific music that is perfect for the, the vinyl experience that wouldn't be a part of my shuffle play there are also specific albums that i will only listen to on vinyl because of the process of listening to it start to finish front to back and that's something that doesn't really come up in criticism these days is that when it comes to music critique it is now usually track by track critique of oh this one will be good for radio this one will be good for this um but you know the overall experience and i'll give you an example and it's 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 um one album that i have is um it's called uh, ascendancy by Trivium, and that album. album front to back is perfect. It's it's absolutely brilliant. It's weird because if you took a track out of isolation, you'd be like, eh. but as part of the full listening experience, it's incredible. It's just the peaks and troughs of the whole thing is is great. And to sit there and 
um, you know, that's not a lazy Saturday morning with a coffee. That's a bit more, you know, Bobby. doing the washing up. But uh, <laughs> really angry at the oh, dishes. Um, but yeah, I I I enjoyed the I, I enjoyed the ritual of it all, and I think there's just something it make. It sounds so cliche, but it makes you feel closer to the music as well. Um, okay, that, that's that's my, that that's my that's my opinion. Say, what would I'd like to hear? What you you two would say your most coveted vinyl is? I'll let you know mine uh, if you'd like. What do you think? I have two really. Uh, I have Mastodon's first LP, with the remission, long play. That's very good. And then I have the double vinyl of Godspeed You Black Emperor's F Sharp A Sharp Infinity, which might be one of the best um, instrumental albums of all time. And um, they're my two favourites, I think, actually. So that's that's what I'm bringing. Uh, hopefully that's. Well Steve's actually up. bringing I'm, stuff here. I'm, I'm just going to say I've got the Martha is Dead test pressing right here, so I, I, I can claim that one. But that's staying on corporate lines a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, I, I I still think the uh, the Stone Roses debut album is one of the best records that's ever been uh, put on vinyl. It is just you know, and it's still on sale now. You can still go into HMV or wherever you want and get it, but. I've got a first pressing of that, and that's uh, that's pretty good. I used to live in the house that was uh, the recording studio where the Stone Roses recorded their second album. So I wish that you said that. Wow. Yep, they actually record a bit <laughs> of this. The so it's album. your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they, went, they, they, they never changed. They went to North Wales and didn't come back the same. Yeah. But okay. So <laughs> <laughs> Stone roses. Okay, that, that that's good. And yeah, uh, Aaron, what 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 have you got here? I I I don't. There there isn't one that I yeah. covet. It, it's... Um. Okay. I, I I honestly I I love the record store experience. Um. Mm-hmm. I went on a trip to Amsterdam. And they have this most amazing. It's it's a joint thing of um, a a coffee shop, a proper coffee shop. Like sorry, oh, like yeah. for actual it's coffee. A joint thing, yeah, 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 proper, yeah, a joint thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coffee <laughs> shop. yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Anyway, a proper coffee and cake. But it also then extends onto this most. It, it's like a cathedral, just dedicated to vinyl, right. from all across time and. I, I think I spent like about four hours in there, you know, going between cake and vinyl and just cleaning your hands, obviously. But um, j- just being able to spend the time looking through. And like I said, there are things that I have on vinyl that I normally wouldn't listen to, but there's things that just catch your eye or, you know, things that you're like, oh, I think I remember when my parents talking about them when I was younger or something. And it's the experimentation. Like, I'm, I feel like it's easy to experiment with music in that space as opposed to it is on Spotify because of discoverability algorithms and things like that. So I really enjoy it. So I, I covered the unknown to me. Okay. Well, well, you know, you just mentioned, but the pair of you mentioned the sort of ritualistic and focused nature of listening. So to turn. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Trivium. The Church of Vinyl. So, 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 you know, you mentioned that, and I think that that's actually um, something is adding an extra layer to video game vinyl specifically, because by the very nature of it being a video game soundtrack, you are engaging with the game as you're listening. So you actually, more often than not, you're not just listening to the Skyrim soundtrack. You're cut, you're also shooting orcs in the face with a bow and arrow or whatever you're up to. So so to take a, a video game OST and to and to press it to a vinyl, which is a very bespoke artisanal thing, and then to sit and listen to it gives you a further understanding and uh recognition of the hard work put into that. So with that being said, I'd like to open this conversation up two ways. I could choose your own adventure book. Okay. Um I would like to know. If you have a couple of favorite video game soundtracks ever, and also, um, do you happen to own any of them on vinyl? Steve, I think you're probably going to have the answers for me here, aren't you? Yeah, I've got a couple. Yeah, I've, got, I've got a couple, to say the least. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, there's a certain level of fear of missing out when a new vinyl is announced. Mm. For a game, you go, oh, I need that now because 
the prices are just on the second hand market are just incredible. Are they? Um, oh, on, honestly, try and get a first pressing of um, something like uh, Hotline Hotline Miami, which right. is a stunning. It is actually Fantastic. one of my favourite soundtracks. That's really good, yeah. I had to get a second pressing. Couldn't afford uh, a first pressing because you're talking three, four hundred dollars. Wow. wow. Okay. You know, you are talking these things that you buy can also be an investment. Mm. Yeah. You've got to keep them nice. You've got to keep them, you know, absolutely mint and stuff. But oh, same what my favorite one, it, it varies from day to day. I can tell you what I think today. Yeah, what is it today? Martha's today, dead. I would say. <laughs> let... <laughs> well, well, I could say grip, but that would be being too corporate. Very obviously good. today and for the oh, for the oh. for the listeners here steve did just give that a, a brief moment in the sun uh oh, oh, oh deliver us the moon oh which is we saw that on last week's episode yeah the brothers yeah. teatman showcased that uh if i'm feeling in a silly mood which i might be today i don't think you can go wrong with the katamari wow. oh yes and what yes. Steve? sorry and... sorry audio listeners but just take my word for it okay yeah um and the king's in there as well. Constellations. And the record itself is just gorgeous, but it's the songs itself. And you put that on, there's a few people around, and you have to, you have to sing along to it. You know, it's... Yeah, it, You'll be doing it's, that. Yeah. It's, it, and it is that. Um, that's, a, that sort of, that's what I would say today. That's what I would say today. Can I ask? But not... I, yeah, I, I was just I was just wondering in particular, like how many soundtracks have you noticed have become more hugely orchestral and like bombastic as time's gone on? Or do you, you find that like you're still finding a lot of love? Because in my head, I imagine the vinyl market would be a lot of, you know, either indie darlings or the big the Assassin's Creeds and stuff like that. But are you finding that like that there's still like equal measure of both because, you know, to be honest, like. Video game soundtracks, to me, whenever I hear them, they are just orchestral at the moment, unless it's some sort of, I don't know, think piece. Like, do you do you get like um rock bands doing soundtracks anymore? Like, do you know what I mean? Well, rock bands, do, there are. You can get. I mean, this is another world you're opening up to. Is bootleg? There is actually a market for bootleg video game soundtracks. What's that? Yeah, so it's it's where people will make them. And only very select people will be in groups. And you have to be in like little Facebook groups and things like that to try and get your hands on them. And they're done in really limited numbers. Uh, you've been able to get Beatles rock band uh, on vinyl. Right. The different albums. Wow. Yeah, which is really strange. But you, you can get all sorts. I've recently got um, Day of the Tentacle soundtrack. Yeah. From one of these illegal groups and such. But, you know, because they don't own the rights, but they yeah. want to see this music on vinyl ah yeah. i see so very very small small batch pressings yeah basically yeah. Of, and doing themselves um do you have any indication you, you know you seem pretty savvy to the the market do you know what your sort of rarest vinyl is oh uh, um that's that's a it's tough isn't it it's it's really it's really hard because obviously if you go on somewhere like i mean the place i use is discogs which is where yeah, right. the best place to to see and it's never the things you think that are going to be rare it'll be this little giveaway seven inch you got from something that you think oh it's okay and all of a sudden so, shack fu yeah so shack fu for, for the yeah. audio listeners there. Aaron just sort of out of nowhere snuck away and, and returns back with Shaq Fu on a smaller vinyl than usual, which is yeah, a seven inch, seven inch, seven vinyl. inch. yeah. And now that's going to be hugely collectible because there wasn't that many made. And, and if somebody is desperate to get that, that's going to be worth more than a final fantasy seven soundtrack. And, and it was also, the last piece of original music that Shaq made from scratch. Is that true? Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Shaq Diesel. Yeah, he's on it. <laughs> that yeah. is on it. That's really yeah. funny that you know that. Okay, that's good. And to the I point where it was too, about, it was... I, 
I spoke to him about it in person. We did this whole thing, and he punched me in the stomach and everything. S- sorry, what was it? A clang? Name drop? Was it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to him on purpose. Yeah. What was he having for breakfast? Yeah, I was well going to say, you, yeah. Aaron <laughs> to couldn't fair, see him because he was on the be... other side of uh, Shinji. No, no, no. To, 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 be, to be fair, this was with Wired. This was with Wired yeah. for Shaq. Okay. Um, yeah. He had um, many foot-long subways that he made look like the most tiniest things in his hand. Wow. That yeah. is... Oh, that's something. Well, the sh- have you uh, give that much of a spin? To be fair, or is that like a collector's thing? You've not. I have never span it. I've kept it as pristine as possible. Even then, that was my first time what? showing it. Yeah, I've kept it in all this time. Thank you for thank you for that. Well, I, I was I was wondering if, if there's a correlation. Then yeah. it's, it's probably more for Steve. But Aaron, I really want to know your answer. Actually, I'd like to know if you've had spent any time thinking at all over time of your favorite video game soundtracks because a lot of love and care does go into them and uh i, I i'm i'm gonna audit them in my head i'm gonna ass- assess whether or not they've got big moments attached to them or they're just good all the way through and then for steve the added question is do you own them on vinyl so um why don't you kick us off steve what what, what over the years you, you're about what 32 so something like that mm. something like that yeah um it's difficult, difficult to say what your favourite is of all time. Right, I can is. give you my number one. Yeah, come on. And no, I don't own it on uh, vinyl because my favourite video game soundtrack is Space Invaders. Like the, uh, like just like Space Invaders? Yeah, yeah. And okay. honestly, well, I've got a theory on this. Yeah. I think Space Invaders, because as you shoot them, it gets faster, your heart pumps, and it's just a really stripped down soundtrack. And it's up there with the Jaws soundtrack for me. Yeah, it just a dum 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 dum. You notes. know, there's that gets me. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and 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 Space Invaders just do, 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 and it just gets faster. And I think if anything is just going to bring out the nostalgic side of me, it's that one. And I haven't got that on uh, vinyl, but I have got this atrocious Space Invaders. Whoa. Um, album from about 1978 which was a, a space invaders hit pop song so that kind of counts wow so that there well, we go. to be alive yeah that's good aaron do you have a couple i i, I assume that you couldn't get it down to one I, or two you see so no i i, I did yeah. I, I bought one along this is my honorable mention which is persona persona 4 persona 4 okay um which has an absolutely stellar soundtrack <clears throat> but if we're if we're doing top three, I think um number three would be Super Castlevania four. Um that's good. That has, yeah, like I, I don't own it. I don't own it on final. I don't know if it is available. If it was, I would buy it in a heartbeat. I'd buy that soundtrack. It is it's something that has just stuck in my head as a child listening to video game music. What they did with um the sound chip on the Super Nintendo to bring the power of that to life was absolutely phenomenal and it stuck with me ever since um my second which i do have on vinyl um oh, is celeste oh okay oh, yeah um, celeste. a bit more of a modern one there for the folks yep. at home so, but celeste i, I think uh, it's 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 a, it's a double vinyl um but what it does what it does for the character of the game, it, it gets across the emotional turmoil with the main character of the game mixed with the icy mountains of the world. It's very cerebral. It's absolutely wonderful. And you, you can, you can um, it's great in the game, but if you just put that on in the day, it's incredibly relaxing and you just feel like a nice... Yeah. You feel the pressure come off you. It's just really good listening. Um, my number one is a cop out to a degree, and that is um, the Legend of Zelda 25th Anniversary Symphony, Symphony of the Goddess. Um, okay. Yeah. They had. No, that's what um, I call Zelda. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> no, but 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 the, but the thing is, to celebrate the 25th year of um, the Legend of Zelda, yeah. they did a tour across the world with um, a symphony orchestra. Um, to play people's favorite tracks from the Zelda series from across the whole series. Um, 
but the, the thing is um it was completely rearranged um it was conducted by Emi Anu so she was the first woman recently uh ever in the world to ever conduct the orchestra at the Oscars she's written uh music for yeah. World of Warcraft uh she, she's she's done so much and she's amazing and she's uh Irish living in California and what she did with the Zelda tracks and the arrangements are amazing. If you listen to Gerudo Valley, um, that the, the orchestral version and the changes and how it flips everything on its head and then it ends with a bit of Ganon's theme. It's just so flipping good. Recommend it to anyone, and it's uh, just absolutely beautiful. That's really good. I, I, I'll I'll feed back into a bit of trivia about the Celeste soundtrack if you'd like, because funnily enough, I was playing this week for work, Chicory, a colorful tale, which is yes, uh, it, Lena Rain, the same composer. Funnily enough, because I thought this is a really good soundtrack. I'm going to look into this, and it's Lena Rain. And after Celeste, she's been getting a lot of work because she's now, oh, she's now doing Minecraft. Which is like no. as big as it can get, really, isn't it? Wow. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, clearly, people. I, and also, another, I, I'll tell you a really big fan favorite soundtrack that she's doing this uh, sequel to. So good luck. Uh, Undertale. She's doing Delta Rune. Wow. Oh, wow. The Undertale soundtrack is one of the ones. It's where amazing. Yeah. That yeah. is. And is that, am I right in that thinking is... that that's the, 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 it's a one man band, really, Undertale, right? Yeah. Uh, it, as far as I know. So it's Toby Fox. Toby I Fox. Think. Yeah. And he did the music for that. But, you know, um, uh, I, I actually asked my, I've got an 11 year old daughter, for those who aren't aware, um, listening at home. And she's now playing quite a lot of games. And I asked, I wanted to know what her perspective was on best game soundtrack because, you know, she, just basically, she's like a fetus still, isn't she? Eleven's nothing. <laughs> what, what does she know about music? Do you know what her favorite soundtrack is? Stardew Valley, and that's the same situation where it's one yeah. person making everything, and that's a banging soundtrack. That to be fair. So, um, my favorite soundtracks are. Uh, I try to not be really boring, but um, I actually not not trying to be too much of a hipster, but I do prefer Oblivion to Skyrim, and I do love the Oblivion soundtrack. Unfortunately, Jeremy Soul. Oh. So that's why I wanted to get that out of the way. But good soundtrack. Speaking of sort of, you know, medieval vibes, um, there's a classical composer called Jessica Curry, who's really, really yes. great. And um, she stepped out of that and started doing some like Gregorian chants, madrigals, used a lot of clarinets for the Everybody's Gone to the Rapture soundtrack. And that, I think, is the best soundtrack I've ever heard. Um, uh, ever but it's not my favorite my favorite is donkey kong country because I think oh, <laughs> yes i'm so glad someone mentioned that i was so tempted to put it in but castlevania went uh, out yeah <laughs> but and yes I lo- and, and aaron mentioned um don't know if this is over the heads of people that don't really care too much about super nintendo but the super nintendo had a sid chip it was a very specific chip that couldn't really do um that many voices of um, polyphony and it didn't have a legato so you couldn't really glide around from one note to another and you had to manually input the waves. And David Wise did that with a Donkey Kong Country soundtrack and created these like weird flute sounding things. And the the Jungle Japes, you know, the first tra- oh. tra- like that's the one for me. Obviously, yes. Strucker Bush Symphony and all these things from the the second one. But I, I love that. But everybody's gone to the rapture is one of the ones where it's special. If you guys have heard it, it's Fable is another one that's very yeah, quintessential like by British. You've got clarinets yeah. and you've got cellos and things like that, and it doesn't feel like like I've got um I got a first pressing of the the Bloodborne vinyl right, and that is like literally just women shouting at you with violins screeching in the background. <laughs> it's just like oh, like full of that, yeah, <laughs> and it's epic. And I've heard that on vinyl, brilliant. But there's something about that clarinet and stuff like that in in, in that. So um, no, that was very insightful and very good to hear. So. Uh, I've got some vinyl trivia that I'd like to sort of touch on before we go. Um, and I'm going to make it true or false. Okay? This is the and we'll see. Should we get, yeah. This is, this is where, this, where, where, whether we decide this to is what? back or not. I'm going to do a true or false vinyl trivia round, Steve. And if you pass, okay. I'll see you again next week. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the most expensive vinyl ever sold. Um, was um, Taylor Swift's Red in 2012. I think that's true or false. 
brand new or second hand market? Second hand market. That's got to be false. Oh, it is false. Do you know what the real answer is? Oh, I don't know. Something like the Sex Pistols original pressing. It's actually um, the Wu Tang Clan's seventh studio album, Once Upon a Time in Shaolin. And and who bought it? Um, some weird like drug company yeah. douchebag who's in prison. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Martin Shkreli yeah. or something, isn't it? Yeah. Do you yeah. know Aaron? Do you know what I'm yeah. on about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. otherwise, that's really damning, isn't it? But uh, just yeah. I think anyone it's that like knows... someone's coming after us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just some douchebag. Yeah. If you're Martin Scully's lawyers, it's unplugged at wireproductions.com. That was uh, unplugged at wireproductions.com. Um, okay. So, in fact, no. Let me let me um let me let me lose the the the, the true or false. But I'll I'll pose the question. Do you know what the biggest selling vinyl record of all time is? Uh. Uh, Tubular Bells, something like that. No. Oh no, um, Dark Side of the Moon. Ooh, it's Michael Jackson's Thriller. Boring. Thriller. Wow. It kinda, okay. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah. uh, and did you know the very? F- this is my last um fact. Okay, the very first thing ever pressed a vinyl. Do you know what that could be? Uh, happy birthday or something like yeah, that. It's, it's well, I was about to say it's yeah, it's Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. Oh, so okay. you know, happy oh, birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah I did hear something though, and I, and and I was wondering uh, if you thought there was any truth in this. I used to do audio engineering professionally, and uh, a guy I knew was a big vinyl maniac, and he said, "Jake, do you know why vinyl sounds better?" He believed there's a science behind it, and it's that, uh, as you might not know, or you probably do, uh, sound is vibration of air. And vinyl um, vibrates at a higher frequency because of the material that it's on. Um, that It vibrates at such a high frequency that the vibrations actually uh, affect the ocular fluid in your eyeballs, which creates dopamine in your brain. And uh, I didn't really believe him, but I started looking into like what frequency ocular fluid is affected on, and he is quite right. But if you Google that, no results. So make it up what you will. How about that? Oh, well, I'm I'm happy to subscribe to that. I'm oh. happy to have my uh, ocular fluid vibrated. <laughs> well, yeah, I yeah, I, please don't try that at home. Um, what are you in for? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Steve. Is there anything that you would um, say to the people at home before we 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 put a lid on this about vinyl and you know what I mean, like the resurgence you've seen? Like, have you have you? I you said that it didn't go away, but what's it been like as somebody who was there the whole time, um, seeing it on like limited run and other things? Is is it been nice? Is it is it been good? And do you think that people should start looking at? collecting vinyl now like what happens if i wanted to get vinyl should i bother or should i just give up and get tidal well well it's changed its position to where it was um vinyl when it was originally around was that's how you listen to music so it became almost like a, a bit of a workhorse nobody looked after the records you know i've got records that I've had since I was a kid that are in an awful state. And that's because that's how we, we treated it. But has it, as it disappeared and then has come back, everybody looks after the records. Everybody's collection is really nice. Mm. I would, you know, I, I think there's nothing wrong. And, and, and I think some people in the vinyl community can be really sniffy about things and say, Oh no, you need this record player and you need this. Just start, just buy a couple of records, just buy something you like. Get a record player. It doesn't matter how cheap it is. Get a record player. Start somewhere. And if you find a love for it, you'll build up. You'll buy a decent, a better player. You'll buy better speakers. You'll build it up over time. Just like, you know, you do with your PC setup. You know, people do that. You do with your car. People build it up over time. But I would just say, decide on what you want. It doesn't have to be gaming soundtrack. It can be a soundtrack. It can be a band you like. Just go and buy some vinyl. Just go buy some experience it have a listen see what you think and if it bites you you just can't afford food most months because <laughs> of uh, the expense that's the only problem <laughs> well thank you very much for the insight steve and thank you aaron for providing us with all the nutrients this podcast needs in the form of propaganda and news <laughs> from outside the wired we'll be back next week for episode seven what will we talk about we'll see you there you can check us out, if you'd like, on any of the podcast stuff that you're listening on, 
and you can follow us. If you're on Spotify, you can follow. If you're on iTunes, there's like I think it is the subscribe button. Didn't mean to do it, but, but it is there. Um, and you know, crucially, if you are listening to this, there is a whole video aspect of this that's a companion to it. Yeah, we've got visuals. We're on YouTube. Um, you can find us just searching Wired Productions. There's a whole Wired Live segment, and we're there under Wired Unplugged. You can leave us a comment, send us a love letter. Um, if you do want to send us something a bit, you know, private, it's unplugged at wiredproductions.com. Any questions, vinyl collections, and if you want to send something public, it's tweet us on Wired P, P4 Productions. Thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Subscribe. Goodbye.